You voted, along with all of your Republican colleagues in the Senate, against the Democrats' $1.9 trillion bill. Uh, according to the White House, well, you tweeted this. Less than 10 percent of President Biden's spending package is actually related to COVID relief. Senator, what's your basis for saying that? Less than 10 percent of the bill. If you look at that, which is related to the COVID, by the way, I have to dispute a little bit David's presentation. The White House never reached out seriously to Republicans. We had no input into actually what transpired. Now, if you look at the things in that package, $130 billion for education. Sounds great. CBO says the amount of money already allocated towards education is so much it can't be spent this year. The money that is there for education will be spent in the out years. That's not related to COVID. If everybody is vaccinated by June, then it's clearly not related to COVID. There is $350 billion for state and local government. California is getting $41 billion, and California has had record tax receipts. Record tax receipts. That $41 billion is not related to COVID. It's, re it's related to kind of helping a blue state. Those are the things I'm speaking of. All right, of. but let's, let, let, let's talk about other aspects of the package, because as you well know, this uh, pandemic is not just a public health crisis, it's also an economic crisis. And according to the White House, stimulus payments will go to 91% of the adults in your state of Louisiana and 93% of the children. And the child tax credit will go to the families of one million kids in Louisiana. Senator, are you saying the people of your state don't need that money? First, let me say Republicans offered an alternative which included that sort of money for the people who needed it. So, yes, economic help was needed for families as well as for businesses. Uh, we're on board with that. You would have had bipartisan support for that. But you know what it also includes? It includes $1.9 billion to give stimulus checks to inmates. Now, inmates are already paid for by the taxpayer. They, they, they can't stimulate the economy unless they're purchasing contraband. Uh, so here we have 1.9 billion stimulus checks going to inmates. I put up an amendment to strike that, and it was, it was unanimously opposed by Democrats. That's the sort of thing which should not be included. Here we've got Bill Cassidy trying desperately to find something anything to complain about when it comes to the $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan. Now, right off the bat, let's touch on the outright lie that less than 10% of the American Rescue Plan goes to COVID, a talking point that's been repeated by other Republicans in recent days as they look for something to attack about this law. So let's just take a look. This is a chart created by Cap Action based on the budget effects of the American Rescue Plan according to the Congressional Budget Office. About 22% of the bill is for $1,400 stimulus checks to help families amid the crisis created by COVID. 18% of the bill is for state and local aid to prevent layoffs and service cuts suffered as a result of COVID. 13% is for unemployment insurance for those who've lost their jobs due to COVID. 11% for tax credits, aid, and child care for families struggling because of COVID. 9% to reopen schools which were closed because of COVID. Another 9% for vaccinations to inoculate people from COVID. The rest allocates funding to farmers, small businesses, FEMA disaster relief, restaurants, bars, renters, homeowners. We could go on and on, but the point is that because Republicans decided to let this virus explode throughout this country to kowtow to Trump, we are now mired in a public health crisis, a jobs crisis, and an economic crisis. Effectively, all of this bill is a response to that. Not just 10% of it, all of it is necessary because of the Republican response to coronavirus. It's telling too that the only point that Cassidy can find to back up his claim that the money isn't being spent on COVID is pointing to $130 billion that he says can't be spent on schools this year, which first of all is 6% of the bill. So Cassidy is claiming that more than 90% of the bill isn't related to COVID, and yet when asked to back that up, his only rebuttal is drawing issue with 6% of it. And second, while the entire $130 billion may not be earmarked for this school year specifically, there is still a massive amount of costs incurred by schools as a result of this pandemic. For example, school districts are facing a huge revenue loss because of the pandemic, and it could take years for the economy to fully recover, which means it could take years for school districts to return to pre-pandemic funding levels, which means that unless they want to start laying off teachers and staff, they'll need full funding now. This money helps school districts do exactly that. But then factor in the increased cost, like masks, 
hand sanitizer rapid testing, hiring more janitors to clean more, counselors and social workers to deal with the mental health implications of the pandemic. All of this takes money. And none of this is a four week commitment. It is a permanent one and it's not free. Beyond that, this is something that Republicans have been wailing about. The single most loudly touted concern from the right is reopening schools. And now, when Democrats have allocated plenty of funding to do exactly that, Republicans are complaining? This money will quite literally ensure that schools can reopen and to do so safely, which has become the rallying cry among the GOP. So which is it? Do you want schools to reopen or do you want to block funding intended to help schools reopen? Because you can't have both. Cassidy then goes on to broach the usual red state, blue state argument, complaining that California will be receiving the most money out of the $350 billion to state and local governments. But let's think for a second. Why might California be getting the most money? Might it have something to do with the fact that it's the most populated state in the country? And might Texas getting the second most funding have something to do with the fact that it's the second most populated state? The next two most populated states are New York and Florida. Any guesses as to which two states are next on the list in terms of funding? And beyond just factoring in population, the aid in the ARP is allocated depending on each state's unemployment, which is why Vermont, a blue state, will receive less funding than Wyoming, a red state, even though Vermont has more people than Wyoming, because Wyoming had a higher unemployment rate than Vermont. So Republicans like Cassidy can cry victim and pretend this is some red state, blue state competition, but this entire scandal is, per usual, partisan BS. But here's the most damning point. When Chris Wallace brings up the fact that payments will go to a staggering 91% of adults in Bill Cassidy's home state of Louisiana. And to that, all Cassidy can say is that inmates will get money. First of all, the amount he cites is $1.9 billion. In a $1.9 trillion bill, that is, and I hope you're ready for this, a staggering 0.1% of the bill. That's his beef with the legislation. He voted no because apparently, one tenth of 1% was unacceptable to him. But second, if Bill Cassidy is so against inmates receiving money, why did he vote for the CARES Act, which also gave inmates money? The fact is that this is an emergency bill intended for people who desperately need relief. And so in order to speed up the process, Democrats went by the same criteria as the previous bill that every Republican voted for. So the fact that Republicans are suddenly balking now that Biden's in office is proof that they're not concerned with substance, they're concerned with politics. Their only priority is trying to make an insanely popular bill look bad, even if they prove themselves hypocrites in the process. Here's the issue with all of this. Republicans like Bill Cassidy know that this bill is popular. It's supported by 75% of all Americans. But they decided that opposing Joe Biden was more important than helping Americans. And so now, they're left with the unenviable task of nitpicking tiny little elements of this bill to attack, which not only makes them seem petty, but woefully out of touch with the rest of the country. At the end of the day, it was them who decided to oppose this legislation, even though Democrats practically begged them to get on board, practically begged them to be able Able to take credit for this bill. So they can clutch their pearls over provisions that account for one tenth of one percent of this package, but they're just proving that they care more about politics than Americans' lives. To see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification bell. And please subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, where I not only break down the biggest stories of the week, but I also interview major players in the world of politics, including Vice President Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, Nancy Pelosi, Katie Porter, Pete Buttigieg, Cory Booker, Jamie Raskin, and many more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts.